Last year, there was a USA Today survey, and it found that 75% of CEOs and 88% of middle managers thought balancing their life was a major concern. You're all business people. You know that anything that is a major concern of 88% of management had better be addressed because it's going to affect profits. So for all of you, working in industries of unprecedented degrees of change and competition and narrowing profit margins on a global basis, balancing your work and your family and your personal life has never been more important. Wow, everybody loves a great bargain. The truth is the best things in life really are free. And Mary Loverty, author of Stop Screaming at the Microwave, has some wonderful ideas on how to connect with your spirit or connect with that which brings you joy. That's what we mean by spirit. And at the same time, bring some to those you love. This is a great idea. Free, 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 free. One year when I had to get my mother a gift, I'm thinking, I don't know what to get her. You know, I, she doesn't need another knick-knack. I don't know what size she wears. I gave her a fruitcake last year. I had to think of something. So I thought, okay, Miss Queen of Life Balance here, think. You tell everybody else that connection creates balance. How can you connect with your mother? And then I thought, what does my mom really want? What my mother really wants is to know that what she did made a difference in my life. A lot of our parents worked hard, sacrificed. Some of them gave up their dreams so we could have ours. And all they really want to know is it worked. So what I did was I came up with a concept called a memory jar. I got a cut glass jar with a lid. You could use anything, an oatmeal box. And then on little pieces of paper, I wrote down memories. I remember the talk we had the night before I got married. I remember calling you from the hospital and telling you that your first grandchild had been born. I remember when I was 13 and you wouldn't let me shave my legs. <laughs> and I put all those memories in the jar and I sent them to her with a note that said, Mom, I'm busy. I know that I neglect you, but what you did made me happy and healthy, and I think about you every day. Now take out a memory and think about me. The idea is you're supposed to take out one memory a day. <laughs> What'd she do? She read them all the first day. But the point is, she read them, and she read them, and she re-read them. After seeing that piece, Laura made her own memory jar, sent it to her father, Charles, and today they are together for the first time in seven years. And say it's the memory jar that reconnected them to a true relationship. From ABC News, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. This week we're going to take a closer look at time. Tonight is time on our side, as the old cliche goes, or is your schedule your enemy? We hurry to save time, but that savings account always seems to get spent. What we're feeling is that for every hour that we allegedly save, we have 10 hours of demands competing for that one hour. Mary Laverty was once an efficiency expert's ideal, every minute packed and scheduled. I was a perfectionist. And miserable. He took a break and wrote a book, Stop Screaming at the Microwave. I was screaming at the microwave that a 60-second meal wasn't fast enough, that if only I had a 30-second meal, my life would be in balance. People have set aside their soul. They've set aside their joy for life. They've set aside what really makes life work. Now, by show of hands, how many of you have been married for, I don't know, more than 10 years? And yes, you can add them together. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> the bottom line is this. Unless we learn to connect, no amount of managing, organizing, delegating, prioritizing, and simplifying is going to make you feel good. And feeling good is what life balance is all about. In addition to appearing three times on The Oprah Winfrey Show and ABC World News Tonight, Mary was a featured expert on a 2020 news special about stress and the American woman. Mary Laverty has captured the attention of people worldwide. She has spoken from Bangkok to Birmingham, delivering a message of joy and success. Mary's newest book is the bestseller yet. I used to have a handle on life, but it broke. Her other book, Touching Tomorrow, has inspired countless families who reconnect with each other. Mary's ideas have reached millions of readers through national publications, such as The Wall Street Journal, Women's Day, Family Circle, 
Better Homes and Gardens, American Health for Women, McCall's, Parenting, First for Women and Self. Mary proudly serves as the national spokesperson for Camp to Belong, which reunites brothers and sisters placed in different foster homes for events of emotional empowerment and sibling connections. The power of the ritual was brought home to me when I was just a little girl. I grew up in a town of a thousand people in Iowa, and we used to go out on the farm and visit my grandparents. We'd get to the front door of the farmhouse, and I would fling open the door, and then I would run just as fast as my little legs could carry me through the living room, through the dining room, through the parlor, into the kitchen, way back into what we called the old summer kitchen, or the pantry. And I would wait excitedly there, as I knew what was coming. And here would come Grandpa Schulte, and he'd be dressed in these striped farmer bib overhauls. And he would slowly and silently walk through the living room, through the dining room, through the parlor, into the kitchen, into what seemed like an eternity to a child. He would finally get back to the pantry with me. And he would go up high on the shelf, and he'd come down to my level with a magic box of Tootsie Roll. And I could grab as many Tootsie Rolls as my two little fists could hold. Now this was very symbolic, because I grew up in a big family. And for those of you who also grew up in big families, you know what I'm talking about. In a big family, there isn't anything that's without limits, except Tootsie Rolls at Grandpa's house. So it was a very symbolic gesture for me. Well, when I grew up and got married and became pregnant with my first child, I wanted to tell my father, his son, that he was going to become a grandpa. So instead of telling him, I just sent him a box of Tootsie Rolls. And reportedly, this quiet, reserved, kind-hearted German man sat down and cried. Now, he wasn't crying because I was going to have a baby. He was remembering the relationship he'd had with his own beloved grandfather. He was remembering his father. And he understood that Grandpa had been gone for a very long time, and that he had now assumed the revered role of Grandpa Schulte. He was remembering that little girl who used to grab Tootsie Rolls by the fistful. And now she's a grown woman having a baby of her own. Those emotions spanned five generations. That is the power of the ritual.